Good evening. We're traveling back in time to the town of Andover in the Massachusetts Bay Colony of New England. The year is 1668, and you have been invited here to meet our neighbor, gentlewoman and poet, Anne Dudley Bradstreet. Mistress Bradstreet was born in 1612 to Puritans Thomas Dudley and Dorothy York Dudley. At 16 years of age, she married Simon Bradstreet, and two years later, they sailed with the other Puritans to the wild shores and forests of New England. Actor Susan Leno portrays the mature Anne as she looks back on her tumultuous life, one in which she raised eight children, wrote hundreds of pages of poetry, and supported her husband in his public life. Today, Mistress Bradstreet is known as the first poet of New England. Thank you so much for inviting me here. I appreciate your interest in my poetry. I'm going to strew verses all through my story as I tell you a little bit about my life. First verse. I am obnoxious to each carping tongue who says my hand a needle better fits. Poet's pen, all scorn I should thus wrong. For such despite they cast on female wits if what I do prove well, won't advance. They'll say it's stolen, or else it was by chance. Yes, yes, that is the way many of my neighbors in the past have felt about my poetry. Women should not write. Women cannot write. And the men call us names like squirrel-brained. So I appreciate your interest. I was born in England in 1612, and I grew up in the manor house in Lincolnshire because my father was steward to the Earl of Lincoln. The Earl was very young and a Puritan, as we were. My older brother and I were tutored by the same teachers who taught the Earl's younger brothers and sisters. So while they may have worn silk and we woolen, the learning was the same. When I was 10 years old, a new tutor came to the manor house, Mr. Simon Bradstreet. I shall never forget his smile. <laughs> of course, I should never forget it. When I was 16 years old, I married Simon Bradstreet. If ever two were one, then surely we. If ever man were loved by wife, then thee. If ever wife was happy in a man, compare with me, ye women, if you can. Two years after we were married, Mr. Bradstreet and I and the whole Dudley family sailed from old England to New England. We were aboard the Arbella, a fleet of 10 other ships, and we were on our way, the men at least felt, to a better life, a purer life. We landed in Salem, June 12, 1630. We did not stay in Salem at all. We moved on to Charlestown, then to the little hamlet that was just being, being created, Boston. And after a few months, we crossed the river to Newtown, which we know now in 1668 as Cambridge. I fell into a long illness, along with a lameness, and it pleased God to keep me for a long time without a child. That gave me great grief. I felt a failure. And I began to write. 
twice ten years old, not fully told, since nature gave me breath, my race is run, my thread is spun, lo, here is fatal death. Yes, I was so despondent. But in early 1633, God did relent, and my first babe was born, Samuel. Now, my father became governor in 1634-35, governor of the Bay Colony. It was a terrible time to be governor, and as soon as he finished, the men decided that we would move further up the coast, away from Boston, and we did. We moved to Ipswich. In Ipswich, my poetry took flight, and so did my family. I, I had my girls, first Dorothy, then Sarah, then Hannah, and in 1640, my second son, Simon. But what of my husband? He was ever in Boston. You see, he was a magistrate on the colony council, and he was never home. Commend me to the man more loved than life. Tell him the sorrows of his widowed wife. My dumpish thoughts, my groans, my brackish tears, my sobs, my longing hopes, my doubting fears. Yes, I began to write letters that were poems to my husband. Here's another one. To my husband absent upon, upon public employment, my head, my heart, mine eyes, my life, nay more, my joy, my magazine of earthly store, if two be one, as surely thou and I, how stayest thou there while I in Ipswich lie? I like the earth this season, morn in black. My son is gone so far in the zodiac, whom whilst I enjoyed, nor storms, nor frosts I felt. His warmth, such frigid colds, did cause to melt. My chilled bones, now numbed, lie forlorn. Return, return, sweet fall. Well, we had lived 10 years in Ipswich when it was time to move yet again, one more time, inland this time, to the, to the area that was to become Andover. In fact, Mr. Bradstreet and I, along with 21 other families, founded the town of Andover. Oh, my husband had had built a beautiful house, two stories, windows with real, real glass. And I had three more children. In fact, in all, I had eight birds hatched in one nest. Four cocks there were, and hens the rest. I raised them up with, with doubt and care, nor cost nor labor did I spare, till at the last, I found their wing, mounted the trees, and learned to sing. Did I say I found their wing? They found their wing, mounted the trees, and learned to sing. My sister Mercy also moved to Andover, along with her husband, John Woodbridge, who was to become the first minister of the town of Andover. He did enjoy my poetry, and we would have talks about it. But 1648 came. We had moved to Andover in 1646. In 1648, terrible troubles in old England. 
really. It was an ensuing civil war. And they called my brother-in-law back to help mediate with the different forces. So he went away. In 1649, the king, King Charles, was beheaded. A shock to many of us in New England. In 1650, a shock to me. Mr. Woodbridge had taken my poems, some of them, to England, to London, and he had them published in a book called The Tenth Muse Lately Sprung Up in America by a Gentlewoman in Those Parts. It was like sending a child out into the world without first washing his face. And I wrote a poem to my book. Thou ill-formed offspring of my feeble brain, who after birth did by my side remain, till snatched from thence by friends less wise than true, who they abroad exposed to public view. At thy return my blushing was not small, my rambling brat in print should mother call. Yes, I declare to you right now, that is what the name of my book should have been. My rambling brat in print. Now a sadder story about the fire. Some b verses upon the burning of our house, July 10th. 1666. In silent night, when rest I took, for sorrow near I did not look. I wakened, was with thundering noise and piteous shrieks of dreadful voice, that fearful sound of fire. Then coming out, beheld a space the flames consume my dwelling place and to my home. Under thy roof no guest shall sit, nor at thy table eat a bit. No pleasant tale shall e'er be told, nor things recounted done of old. No candle e'er shall shine in thee, nor bridegroom's voice e'er heard shall be. In silence ever shall thou lie. Adieu, adieu, all's vanity. Oh, and I must say adieu to you. Adieu. Let's meet again soon. <laughs>